Let's jump back in the mailbag. We haven't been in the mailbag in a few weeks. <laughs> no, I, I, I forgot to go to the mail. It's down the street. I just haven't had time. It's been raining. Yeah. So let's jump back in. And, and good news, Hector from Tucson is back. Um, it's great to, to, to hear from him again. You know, maybe he could send emails. I was thinking, like, why do you keep sending written messages? But I don't go to the mail all the time, Hector. Um, he has a question about creating a content strategy, something that we do a lot of at our agency. Hey, guys, I hear so much about content strategies. I think it's something that I want to create for my new website about dogs wearing hats. Okay, to each his own, Hector. What should I do when consider making this strategy? Well, first of all, I'm really curious to see about see your website about dogs wearing hats. Um, he probably should listen to our Airbud podcast from a few weeks ago. Might get some inspiration <laughs> about dogs doing human things. But Ian, we do create a lot of content strategies in our office. Do you have any tips or or things that Hector should consider when building this content strategy? Yeah, I think there are, there are a few points to bear in mind. Um, Key thing, right off the bat, you've got to know your audience. Before you create any kind of content, it's crucial that you understand who that audience is, what they're interested in, and how you can best reach them. Or as part of your strategy, you might work out how you can best reach them, but you can create um, personas and things or do market research to help you find this information out if you're not sure. But you've got to know exactly who you're targeting um, and not just assume that everyone out there is going to be interested in what you have to say. Um, you've got to define your brand voice would be the second the second point, so that your communications are consistent and they have that tone that you think resonates with your audience that you've uh, defined in the first point. Um, I'd suggest that you create a content calendar so that rather than just thinking, oh, I haven't posted in a week and a half, I better get something out there. You know exactly when you're gonna post and that you could plan all your posts which are perhaps related to um, seasonal changes or mm -hmm. holiday events, things like that. You've got all that prepped out long in advance. Um, Get the most out of your content would be the next one. Don't just create one post for Facebook and say, okay, I've posted that, that's done. And then three or four days later, you're thinking, oh, now I have to create something for, for YouTube. It's like, oh, or create a new blog post. You can repurpose content. So if you write a blog post, you might want to first make a, a podcast and then make your blog, blog post about the podcast. And then you could put a snippet, which links back to all these things. So you've got it over a, a range of channels. And then last and perhaps most importantly, Monitor how everything's performing after you've been running your content for a while and analyze that performance so that you know what works and what doesn't for your audience. Make sure you're hitting the right people and then you know exactly where you can adjust um, the, the things you're doing as needed. Yeah, yeah. All very valid points. I mean, the audience one, not only who they are, but what are their needs what kind of roadblocks are they facing? What questions do they have? What problems are they looking to solve? Yeah. All those things play a role in the kind of content you create. Um, yeah, the, everything there is so important to remember. Even the idea of the content calendar where yeah. consistency is so important when you think about creating content. Like it's great to, to put out a really solid piece, whether it's a written piece or a video, but that can't be the strategy. That's a piece of the strategy. That's one element of it. Like you said, what else are we doing with follow-up? How else are we going to use it, et cetera? Um, so yeah, consistency is a really, really important one. And I know like, you know, let's say we create a content strategy for a client and some of it revolves around like written content. Well, you start thinking about which content is the most difficult to create, which one's the easiest to create for that client. Some clients, they... They have a team that are great writers or videographers or photographers. So that all works into it too. So we're not going to create a content strategy around written content if you have no desire to create written content. Like, mm -hmm. sure, there's tools that can help, but you still have to have some desire to want to do it because if you don't have that desire, you're never going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, creating a blog, for example, is a great way to to um, to promote whatever you're doing website-wise. But again, you have to have the content to support it. That also for me, knowing your audience as well, whereby 100%. Your audience do they want written content on Snapchat and YouTube and you're writing blog posts? No one's ever going to see them. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, hundred percent for mine. I, I'm building off one of the ones that you talked about. For me, it's all about the idea of repurposing, repackaging, reusing. I call it creating content with legs. So, you know, you've got that long video. How can you cut it down into shorter stuff that can go out as verticals on, on reels and 
TikTok or whatever the case may be? Can you transcribe a video that you've created to create that written content? Can you do the reverse and, and use written content to, um, to create audio or video? There's so many tools out there now that you should never create a piece of content and it simply gets one use and it's, that's it. It's done. There's so many different ways to reuse, repurpose, repackage, remix that anything you create should be created in a way that it can, it can be used multiple times in multiple places, even recycling content. You know, let's say you created something a while ago. Why not? get that, you know, dust it off and let's recycle it. Let's try it again. Do we put a different spin on it? Do we change a filter on photos? Do we do whatever and get that back out the door? Because you have to assume that not everybody saw your last post or read your last blog post or went on your website two days ago. So doing all that is really important too. And like I said, there's so many amazing tools. I was on a um, a, uh, a webinar yesterday for... Um, Descript, Descript.com. And they have, they have a really awesome tool that we've used before already, but now they're even amping it up more so with a, a new AI powered feature called um, Underlord. And some of the things you can do with it to reuse, repurpose, remix, repackage um, is just mind blowing. So there's so many of those tools out there. That's just one of them. But for me, that content strategy, once you've got your key things figured out, like you're talking about your audience, your goals, et cetera. Then it comes down to how can we get the most out of anything we create? Nothing should be one and done. Let's figure out how to reuse it. So um, hopefully Hector, that kind of gives you some ideas, but developing that content strategy is just crucial because if you kind of go into it flying blind, you're just going to create for the sake of creating and, and nothing's really going to happen. So um, another thing too, I know we learn with stuff we do on social and stuff we do with the podcast, always be willing to learn. Don't be willing or be willing to fail and, and be willing to try new things. Don't get stuck in your ways. If you've put something out and it doesn't get the, um, the recognition or the views that you thought it would, that's fine. Figure out what you need to do and learn from it and, and, and do it again. Keep showing up is another really important one Absolutely. when it comes to a content strategy. So, um, but again, you're not, you're not alone. There's so many amazing tools and there's data out there available. Once you've got that strategy in place, change it if you need to move on as you, as you have to as well. There. Absolutely. Hopefully Hector's website with dogs wearing hats. Ideally, that's not where I would be if I was starting a website right now, but maybe Hector's into that kind of stuff. So um, I don't know what kind of market there is for dogs wearing hats. I think it's probably bigger than we expect. Yeah, with the you know in Instagram right. world that we live in, I'm sure dogs with hats would be extremely popular. <laughs> yeah. Imagine sitting through an Instagram uns unskippable ad with a dog just wearing a hat talking about a website of dogs wearing hats. Not fun. <laughs> 